it's Alice and welcome to the last final fourth part of my bookshelf tour and today I am basically just going to show you everything I haven't shown you yet and it's a lot I have books in a lot of places so let's go okay so we're going to start off by taking a look at this shelf right here which is a whole situation and I could have cleaned it up for you but to be honest this is what it looks like most of the time and it's always a mess. Because this is always a mess, I am actually going to replace this shelf in a little while. I have another shelf that I want instead that I think will work better and I think or hope that it's not gonna be or get as messy. This, for whatever reason, just doesn't work for me. I don't think I can have things that you can stack things on top of because it just ends up like this. The other shelf will also give me a little bit more space I think but either way it'll probably look better so I can't wait to get that but this is what I have now and this is what it looks like right now so let's just go through the books and let's start here. So firstly in this little square we have this graphic novel by Emily Carroll which is like a creepy story. She is the author and the illustrator of the book Through the Woods as well, which is why I got this. I should really put this with my graphic novels, but this is where it is right now. I'm gonna obviously redo all of this and I just, I'm gonna do it when I get the new shelf. This little book that I have here is by Neil deGrasse Tyson, which I've put here because I have Astrophysics for People in a Hurry on this shelf and this is one of my favorite Nonfiction books. I haven't read this one yet, but I'm going to. I also have this little book, which is actually one of my favorite creepy stories. I've never heard anyone talk about this, but I really like it. And I do think it was also made into a movie, so you may have heard of that. But this is an excellent, excellent little creepy story. We also have this book by Greta Thunberg. We have a book on trees. This is a nonfiction book. It's really, really good. I also have these two collections by P.D. James, which has excellent, excellent covers. And these are like short stories and they're really, really good. I can see on this shelf that I have a lot of books that I've had for a very long time. This is Beneath Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepides. I haven't read this yet, but I still want to. I have read this one. I haven't read this one and I haven't read this one. These two I've actually kept because of the covers, so I guess I'll show you that. There's something about bees that just get me and it makes me never want to get rid of any books with bees on them. So I've kept this in part because I want to read it and in part because it has a beautiful cover. This I have also kept because it has an excellent, excellent cover. The last three books are the three books in Stephen Fry's mythology retelling trilogy I guess. I think there are only going to be three of these, so we have Mythos, Heroes, and Troy, all of which are excellent. I guess we should then tackle this situation. Some of these books, like these ones, I've placed here on purpose, but then this stack is just a book haul that I did, and I haven't gotten around to putting the books like properly on my shelves yet, so it's just stay there. There's actually more books down there that are just like that, but yeah, let's just take a look at it. These shelves like on top here are also double stacked which I don't love but I ran out of space so we did what we had to. <laughs> at the top here we have some of these Shakespeare works. These are the Folger editions which are supposed to be quite easy to read for people who haven't read Shakespeare before. So this is gonna be my way into Shakespeare which I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna start this at some point but not right now. Then in the back here we have some of Dan Brown's books. So we have The Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, we have Inferno, and then The Lost Symbol. I've actually read all of these books, so these are rereads for me when I read them. Recently I reread The Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons, and to be honest, I still really like these books. They're really fun adventure books. This whole stack of books is a relatively recent haul. Actually, maybe not these two, these are new, but this is a recent haul. We have some more of William Shakespeare's works. I got these because I wanted some pretty editions of them. And then all of these books are just books that I haven't read yet. These two books are both history books in Norwegian. Both of them are about Norway during the Second World War. I haven't read any of these yet, but as all of my 
unread books. I do plan to read them. Then we have some beautiful art books. We have this one, which has a beautiful cover. And then all of these ones are about different artists. So this is obviously Leonardo da Vinci. We have Caravaggio, Titian. I don't actually know how you say this, but I think it's Titian. Renoir, Monet, and Hokusai. These are great, like, introductory books to the artists and their most famous works of art. I'm quite interested in art and I want to learn more, which is why I got these books. And I've read two of them, but the rest of them are unread. Behind those books, we have these ones. These are the first three books in a crime series that's originally Swedish, but I'm reading it in Norwegian. This is really, really good. This is the first book. Then I have the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. The first book is The Bear and the Nightingale. I love this series. I've read the first two, but I've yet to read the third one, but it feels like a winter book to me, so I'm saving it for winter. Then we've got some of Stephen King's books. I have these really cool, like, vintage-looking editions. I think these are called the Halloween editions. I don't remember, but I have four of these. I've read Carrie and Misery, and the other two I still haven't read. The stack next to that are all in the same series. This is a cozy mystery series, and I love these covers. Like, this is just excellent, excellent book design. Like, all of them are just absolutely beautiful. I may have like bought a lot of these because the covers were so beautiful, but I have read quite a lot of them and they're very very enjoyable. So if you like cozy mysteries and you like things set in Italy, I would really recommend the series. Let's just get this out of the way too. All of these books here are books from book hauls that I've done somewhat recently and then a couple at the bottom I have read and I just put there for whatever reason. And these are books that you will have seen in book hauls and I haven't read any of the ones that I've hauled. Behind that stack we have another stack which isn't all that interesting. At the top here we have some books that I read fairly recently that I haven't put back yet. And then all of these books are just books in Norwegian that are like crime series. Moving back to the actual shelf though, this one is, as you can see, mostly filled with the A Song of Ice and Fire series. These are the Game of Thrones books, if you don't know. Then I have this book, which is like, uh, I don't know how to explain this. This is like a crime book, but you have to solve it yourself and only three people ever, I think, has managed to solve it. I probably won't be able to, but if I suddenly have a lot of time on my hands, I will give it a crack. These two books, though, are really cool, and I want to show you. These are some of my favorite books that I have on my shelves. This one is really big. This is The Occult, Witchcraft, and Magic, and it's a nonfiction book all about the history of the occult and magic. It has loads of art in it and documents and just everything to do with the history of magic, witchcraft, and the occult. And it's just a very, very cool book. Mythology is a book that you have probably heard of. This is pretty famous. This is the 75th anniversary edition of this book. It's absolutely beautiful. Again, it's illustrated if I can find an illustration for you. It has illustrations like this on it, and then it also has these kinds of illustrations, which I think just add another layer to this book, which is really cool. Next to that we have this beautiful blue and green shelf. I really love the colors on this one. We have The Mothers by Britt Bennett, which I haven't read yet. We have The Mountain Sing, which is an excellent historical fiction novel. I would really recommend it. And then we have something... Searching for Sylvie Lee by Jean Kwok, which I haven't read. This is a book that I got in New Zealand when I was there. It's a book about just tracks and travels in New Zealand. I love this cover and I love this cover design and I'm never going to get rid of it because of that because I just think it's so beautiful. Next to that we have one of my favorite nonfiction books. This is The Feather Thief by Kirk Wallace Johnson. This also has an excellent cover and this is one of my favorite nonfiction books ever. It's so so good. 
It's a little bit hard to sell in some ways because it's in part about fly fishing, but I'm not interested in fly fishing and I love this book. It's all about this heist and like natural history and it's just so good. It's a very, very exciting story and I would really, really recommend it. I feel like that book deserves more love. Then we have The Strays by Emily Bitto, again, beautiful cover. This is an excellent coming of age story set in Australia. Then we have Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. I haven't read this, I've had it for ages, and I'm gonna read it one day. Then we have a book in Norwegian, we have a memoir, and then we have one of my favorite books from childhood. This is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgins Burnett, and I remember finding this book, not this book in particular, but like another edition of this book, in the school library when I was very young, and it's the first book that I can vividly remember reading and being like, okay, reading is actually pretty cool. Then we have The Gloaming, which has an excellent cover by Kirsty Logan. I haven't read this one yet, but it's on the list. Then we have another one of my favorite books. This is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Excellent, excellent dystopian novel. Really, really good, and I love it. I really need to reread it, actually. Lastly on the shelf, we have Lord of the Rings, which I'm sure you've heard of. This is an edition that has all three books in one book. I really like the look of it. I have read Lord of the Rings, but I feel like that's a thing that I'm gonna do once and then probably never again because I'll just rewatch the movies. Moving down a little bit, we have this shelf where I've stacked some books at the top as usual. This is your guide to not getting murdered in a quaint English village, which is a really like funny illustrated book all about what to avoid in like an English murder village. Then we have a YA book. This is Curse of the Spectre Queen, which I really want to read. Then we have this book, which is absolutely beautiful. I love the cover design of this. It might have been one of the reasons I got this book, but it also sounds really, really interesting. It's historical fiction and Ugh, I just can't get over this cover. The rest of the books on the shelf are just a mishmash of everything. We have These Violent Delights by Micah Neverever, which I actually read very recently and I absolutely loved. If you like dark academia and books like The Secret History and Call Me By Your Name, this is very highly recommended. Then we have this beautiful edition of The 100 Years of Solitude. I haven't read this book, it's on my TBR, but I do have this beautiful edition, so I should really just read it. I have a lot of beautiful covers on the shelf, I'm realizing. We have this book, which is a book about death, because I love reading those. We have This Green and Pleasant Land by Ayesha Malik. This is a very underrated book. I think everyone should read it if you like contemporary fiction. And this is a beautiful edition. The Prophets I haven't read yet, but I have read this one. This is a very, very good book. And again, really nice cover. We have this book, which I've had for literal ages. I think I maybe have had this for like 10 years or something. I still haven't read it. One day I will, but it's a little chunky. So I'm putting it off like I do with a lot of chunky books. This though, maybe wins like best cover on this shelf. I don't really know, it's a tough competition, but this is absolutely beautiful. This is a short story collection that I've read. To be honest, I don't remember that much from it, but I do think I liked it. And I just love the shiny bits on this cover. It's beautiful. Then we have The Personal Librarian, which I haven't read yet. And then we have this book, which I'm gonna read this fall. I'm really looking forward to it. I was supposed to read it last fall and then I just never got around to it, but this obviously, just looking at it, is the perfect autumn book. It's also illustrated, which makes it even better, and this is just like a collection of dark fairy tales, I think, and I can't wait to read it. On the shelf next to that, I have this book, which is on my TBR. Again, beautiful cover, and then I basically just have these cookbooks, which I do use, but not that much. I wish I was better at using cookbooks, and I'm thinking of maybe moving them into my kitchen and maybe that'll make me use them more, but I don't really know. I have used all of them though, and I really like all of them. This shelf also has quite a lot of beautiful books on it. We have this nonfiction book, which is very, very good. We have The Toymakers by Robert Dinsdale, which again, excellent cover. 
Still haven't read it. I mean to read it every winter and then I just forget about it a little bit, but maybe this winter will be the winter I read it. This is another beautiful book. This is The House Without Windows. This has like foil on the cover. Absolutely beautiful. Then we have a book I keep meaning to read, still haven't read. It's Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. I really need to read this. I think I'm really gonna like it. It's supposedly super weird, but I usually like weird books, so I think I'm gonna love it. Beneath that we have my beautiful F. Scott Fitzgerald collection. I have these books all in the same like editions. These are super super pretty. They have like art deco design on the covers. They're shiny and you know I love a shiny book so I just had to get all of these. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I really like F. Scott Fitzgerald. I haven't read that much of his work. My favorite is definitely The Great Gatsby and I should get back into reading him actually and I should reread the Great Gatsby because it's one of my favorite classics. Next to that I have this short story collection which again has a shiny cover. I have a book about paintings and then a book about knitting which I feel like those two books sum me up pretty well. <laughs> it wouldn't be a bookshelf tour video on this channel without another awkward angle. Sorry about that. These are the lowest shelves so this is just how it's gonna be. At the top here though we have a very exciting book. This is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng which is one of my absolute favorite books. I think everyone should read this. It has excellent characters. It's exciting and compulsive and I just love it. It's one of my favorite books I've ever read. Then I have this edition of... I don't know what this book is called in English actually. It's a book by Ernest Hemingway. I got this from my grandfather and I just took it because I thought maybe I wanted to read it. Then we have this beautiful cover. Oh, there are so many beautiful covers. I just... I understand why I have such a book buying problem when I look through my shelves because there are so many beautiful books. This one is also beautiful. I haven't read it yet though. I am a little bit apprehensive about this book actually. I want to read it and I want to try something by this author but I don't know how I'm gonna feel about the writing style heard kind of mixed things. I think it's the kind of style that's not for everyone but I guess I'll have to read this to see if it's for me. Then we have Long Bright River, Remembered, and then I actually want to show you the books at the bottom. They have really beautiful covers too. This book by Liz Moore by the way is really really good. This one also has a beautiful cover actually. I think I got this from the Women's Prize for Fiction one year or something. I really need to read it. Then we have some books I've had for a very long time. We have The Narrow Road to the Deep North. I'm gonna read this one day, probably. We have The Light Between Oceans. Haven't read it yet, but I want to. Then we have this book, which is another book I've had for a very long time. It's another book I've avoided for a long time because it's really chunky. I do love this cover though, and every time I see it I think, oh yeah. I really need to read that. The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan is a book I've read. This is one of the first books I actually discovered from booktube so I feel kind of nostalgic about it. I love this cover. This is a really weird and whimsical story but it's very very good. And then lastly on the shelf we have The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton which I'm sure you've heard of. Next to that I have a nonfiction book I haven't read yet. I have this book which I want to show you because the cover it's beautiful. This is And the Ocean Was the Sky by Patrick Ness. I haven't read this. I realize I haven't looked at this for quite some time, but it is illustrated, I think. Yeah, it is. It looks beautiful and like with a lot of books, I just need to read it. This book is also illustrated. This is a book in Norwegian and it basically just means Life Illustrated is the title, I guess. This art is very like popular here in Norway. This artist is very popular and I really really like this kind of art so I really should flip through this more. I did flip through it when I got it and then I just put it on my shelf but I haven't actually like taken the time to read it or look at it that much. Winter Tales is another illustrated book. This has several stories from around the world. I have read this one. It's the perfect book for like winter when you want something a little bit lighter and it's also a great like 
gift to give to someone because it's so pretty. The last shelf here just has a little bit of mishmash of everything. We have a book by Grady Hendrix, which I haven't read yet. We have this beautiful, beautiful book. This cover is just absolutely amazing. I'm never going to be able to get rid of this book because it's so beautiful. I haven't read this yet, but it's historical fiction and I really want to. We have this book, which I haven't read. Then we have some Neil Gaiman. I have read this book. I really liked it. I read it like maybe five years ago now, but I still remember it pretty well. We have some Norwegian historical fiction. Then we have this book, which again, this cover. A lot of the editions for this book are actually green and I ended up ordering this from Waterstones, I think. There was like a Waterstone special edition. I saw this and I just had to have it, so I paid quite a lot of money for this book, but it was definitely worth it. It's one of my most, most beautiful books. Now I have a book by Elif Shafak. This is 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world. This is a really, really good book as well. And again, very pretty cover. Next to that, I have a copy of Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. I have a really old book in Norwegian. We have more Neil Gaiman with The Ocean at the End of the Lane, The Haunting of Henry Twist, and then I just have some, like, albums that I've made from trips that I've been on. Lastly, we're gonna take a look at this shelf and one shelf that's right next to it. I'm actually getting rid of these shelves as well. I don't mind these as much. I used to have something else here and then I just ran out of space for books, so I started putting books here. I kind of like them like this, but I am gonna get rid of this and do an entirely different thing. I have a lot of my photography books on the shelf. We have a book by Tim Walker, Mika Ninagawa, we have this by Kirsty Mitchell, a book by Jimmy Nelson, we have an art book, we have a photography book that I got from one of my colleagues and friends, which of course went straight into my photography section. We have some interior design books and then we have these small, very dusty, <laughs> like, vintage minis I think they're called. These are just excerpts from all kinds of different authors and I got some of these because I wanted to try different authors works and see if I like them. I'm not going to show you the insides of these but if you ever want a video about photography books and or interior design books I have more somewhere else in my apartment than these ones. I have quite a lot of them and if you ever want a video like where you get to look inside the books let me know and I will make one. On the last shelf I have all of these white books, I have some penguin minis, and then I have these small little books, like this is an edition of The Virgin Suicides, which I just think is very cute. I actually have a lot of books here that I really really like. We have a book by Maya Angelou, which is really good. We have this book, which I still haven't read, but I'm going to. This is one of my favorite death books. This is From Here to Eternity by Caitlin Doughty. It's all about funeral rites and like how to... how different cultures deal with their dead. It's very, very interesting and surprisingly funny. Wildwood I haven't read but it has a beautiful cover. It's also very chunky so I am true to form avoiding it. We have a memoir by Jane Goodall which I want to read. We have Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine, which is a contemporary book. It's really, really good. I would really recommend it. Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I've read and really liked. And then Sapiens, which I'm sure you've heard of. These blue penguin minis are the penguin mini moderns, I think they're called. And then the black ones are just called the penguin minis, I think. And I have a bunch of these. I've read quite a lot of them and I still have some of them to go, but... I really like them. I kind of wish I had all of them, but I'm happy with my little collection. Up here I have a book by Banana Yoshimoto, which I should really put with my other books by this author, but I think I just put it here because it's white. Then we have my John Krakauer books. John Krakauer is another one of my favorite nonfiction writers. My favorite by him is Into Thin Air. This is about him climbing Mount Everest on like one of the deadliest years on Mount Everest and it's so, so good. It's harsh, but very good. I've also read Under the Banner of Heaven, which I really liked. 
Eiger Dreams I haven't read and Into the Wild I liked but I didn't love. I still think this is the best one by him. Then we have this book which is a book about how to look at art which I should really try to read. It sounds interesting. I think this is the kind of book that's gonna open my eyes and like really blow me away so I gotta get to this one. If you've spent any kind of time on this channel, you will know that Strange Weather in Tokyo by Harumi Kawakami is one of my favorite books. This is a really quiet and weird book about unlikely friendship and it's about food and it's not for everyone, but I just absolutely loved it. I also really like this cover. I think it's really cool. Then we have a book by Roald Dahl. This is some of his short stories. And then, at the very end here, we have The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. Donna Tartt is one of my favorite authors. My favorite book by her is The Secret History, but this one is really, really good as well. I actually want to reread this book. I remember loving it, but I do remember it being a little bit long. But I want to read it again. There's something about the way she writes that just gets me for some reason. And I wish she would write more books, but she writes quite slowly. I can't blame her though because all of the books that we get from her are great. Okay everyone, that's it. That completes my entire bookshelf tour. It's been a long road but we made it. I hope you enjoyed having a little look at my shelves and my books and thank you as always very much for hanging out with me and I will see you soon. Bye!